Within economics the concept of utility is used to model worth or value, but its usage has evolved significantly over time. The term was introduced initially as a measure of pleasure or satisfaction within the theory of utilitarianism by moral philosophers such as Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill. But the term has been adapted and reapplied within neoclassical economics, which dominates modern economic theory, as a utility function that represents a consumer's preference ordering over a choice set. As such, it is devoid of its original interpretation as a measurement of the pleasure or satisfaction obtained by the consumer from that choice. <laughs> Utility function Consider a set of alternatives facing an individual, and over which the individual has a preference ordering. A utility function is able to represent those preferences if it is possible to assign a real number to each alternative, in such a way that alternative A is assigned a number greater than alternative B if, and only if, the individual prefers alternative A to alternative B. In this situation an individual that selects the most preferred alternative available is necessarily also selecting the alternative that maximizes the associated utility function. Gérard de Brew precisely defined the conditions required for a preference ordering to be representable by a utility function. For a finite set of alternatives these require only that the preference ordering is complete so the individual is able to determine which of any two alternatives is preferred, or that they are equally preferred, and that the preference order is transitive. Applications <laughs> 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 Utility is usually applied by economists in such constructs as the indifference curve, which plot the combination of commodities that an individual or a society would accept to maintain a given level of satisfaction. Utility and indifference curves are used by economists to understand the underpinnings of demand curves, which are half of the supply and demand analysis that is used to analyze the workings of goods markets. Individual utility and social utility can be construed as the value of a utility function and a social welfare function respectively. When coupled with production or commodity constraints, under some assumptions these functions can be used to analyze Pareto efficiency, such as illustrated by Edgeworth boxes in contract curves. Such efficiency is a central concept in welfare economics. In finance, utility is applied to generate an individual's price for an asset called the indifference price. Utility functions are also related to risk measures, with the most common example being the entropic risk measure. Revealed preference It was recognized that utility could not be measured or observed directly, so instead economists devised a way to infer underlying relative utilities from observed choice. These revealed preferences, as they were named by Paul Samuelson, were revealed, e.g., in people's willingness to pay. Utility is taken to be correlative to desire or want. It has been already argued that desires cannot be measured directly, but only indirectly, by the outward phenomena to which they give rise, and that in those cases with which economics is chiefly concerned, the measure is found in the price which a person is willing to pay for the fulfillment or satisfaction of his desire. Topic. Functions There has been some controversy over the question whether the utility of a commodity can be measured or not. At one time, it was assumed that the consumer was able to say exactly how much utility he got from the commodity. The economists who made this assumption belong to the cardinalist school of economics. Today utility functions, expressing utility as a function of the amounts of the various goods consumed, are treated as either cardinal or ordinal, depending on whether they are or are not interpreted as providing more information than simply the rank ordering of preferences over bundles of goods, such as information on the strength of preferences. Cardinal When cardinal utility is used, the magnitude of utility differences is treated as an ethically or behaviorally significant quantity. For example, suppose a cup of orange juice has utility of 120 utils, a cup of tea has a utility of 80 utils, and a cup of water has a utility of 40 utils. With cardinal utility, it can be concluded that the cup of orange juice is better than the cup of tea by exactly the same amount by which the cup of tea is better than the cup of water. 
Formally speaking, this means that if one has a cup of tea, she would be willing to take any bet with a probability, p, greater than 0.5 of getting a cup of juice, with a risk of getting a cup of water equal to 1 p. One cannot conclude, however, that the cup of tea is two-thirds as good as the cup of juice, because this conclusion would depend not only on magnitudes of utility differences, but also on the zero of utility. For example, if the zero of utility was located at minus 40, then a cup of orange juice would be 160 utils more than zero, a cup of tea 120 utils more than zero. Neoclassical economics has largely retreated from using cardinal utility functions as the basis of economic behavior. A notable exception is in the context of analyzing choice under conditions of risk see below. Sometimes cardinal utility is used to aggregate utilities across persons, to create a social welfare function. Ordinal When ordinal utilities are used, differences in utils values taken on by the utility function are treated as ethically or behaviorally meaningless. The utility index encodes a full behavioral ordering between members of a choice set, but tells nothing about the related strength of preferences. In the above example, it would only be possible to say that juice is preferred to tea to water, but no more. Ordinal utility functions are unique up to increasing monotone or monotonic transformations. For example, if a function u x display style u x is taken as ordinal, it is equivalent to the function u x 3 display style u x caret 3 because taking the third power is an increasing monotone transformation or monotonic transformation. This means that the ordinal preference induced by these functions is the same although they are two different functions. In contrast, cardinal utilities are unique only up to increasing linear transformations, so if u x is taken as cardinal, it is not equivalent to u x 3 Topic. Preferences Although preferences are the conventional foundation of microeconomics, it is often convenient to represent preferences with a utility function and analyze human behavior indirectly with utility functions. Let X be the consumption set, the set of all mutually exclusive baskets the consumer could conceivably consume. The consumer's utility function U X R Display style u colon x to math b b r ranks each package in the consumption set. If the consumer strictly prefers x to y or is indifferent between them, then u x u y display style u x g e q u y. For example, suppose a consumer's consumption set is x. Topic. Nothing, one apple, one orange, one apple and one orange, two apples, two oranges, and its utility function is U nothing. Zero, U one apple. Topic One, U one orange. Two, U one apple and one orange. Topic 4 u 2 apples 2 and u 2 oranges equals 3 then this consumer prefers one orange to one apple but prefers one of each to two oranges in microeconomic models there are usually a finite set of l commodities and a consumer may consume an arbitrary amount of each commodity this gives a consumption set of r plus l Display style math bb r underscore plus caret l, and each package x element of r plus l display style x in math bb r underscore plus caret l is a vector containing the amounts of each commodity. In the previous example, we might say there are two commodities, apples and oranges. If we say apples is the first commodity, and oranges the second, then the consumption set 
x equals r plus 2 display style x equals math bb r underscore plus caret 2 and u 0 0 topic 0 u 1 0 1 u 0 1 topic 2 u 1 1 4 u 2 0 topic 2 u 0 2 3 as before Note that for u to be a utility function on x, it must be defined for every package in x a utility function u x r represents a preference relation on x i f f for every x y element of x Display style x y in x u x u y display style u x l e q u y implies x y display style x prosec y. If u represents display style prosec, then this implies display style prosec is complete and transitive and hence rational topic revealed preferences in finance in financial applications e.g. portfolio optimization an investor chooses financial portfolio which maximizes his her own utility function or equivalently minimizes his her risk measure for example, modern portfolio theory selects variance as a measure of risk. Other popular theories are expected utility theory and prospect theory. To determine specific utility function for any given investor, one could design a questionnaire procedure with questions in the form: How much would you pay for X percent chance of getting Y? Revealed preference theory suggests a more direct approach: observe a portfolio X asterisk which an investor currently holds, and then find a utility function risk measure such that X asterisk becomes an optimal portfolio. Topic: <laughs> Examples. In order to simplify calculations, various alternative assumptions have been made concerning details of human preferences, and these imply various alternative utility functions such as CES constant elasticity of substitution, or isoelastic utility, isoelastic utility, exponential utility, quasilinear utility, homothetic preferences, Stone-Geary utility function, Gorman polar form. Greenwood Herkowitz Huffman preferences, King Plosser Rebelow preferences, Hyperbolic absolute risk aversion. Most utility functions used in modeling or theory are well behaved. They are usually monotonic and quasi concave. However, it is possible for preferences not to be representable by a utility function. An example is lexicographic preferences, which are not continuous and cannot be represented by a continuous utility function. Topic. Expected The expected utility theory deals with the analysis of choices among risky projects with multiple possibly multidimensional outcomes. The St. Petersburg paradox was first proposed by Nicholas Bernoulli in 1713 and solved by Daniel Bernoulli in 1738. D. Bernoulli argued that the paradox could be resolved if decision makers displayed risk aversion and argued for a logarithmic cardinal utility function. Analyses of international survey data in the 21st century have shown that insofar as utility represents happiness, as in utilitarianism, it is indeed proportional to log income. The first important use of the expected utility theory was that of John von Neumann and Oskar Morgenstern, who used the assumption of expected utility maximization in their formulation of game theory. Von Neumann–Morgenstern 
Von Neumann and Morgenstern addressed situations in which the outcomes of choices are not known with certainty, but have probabilities attached to them. A notation for a lottery is as follows, if options A and B have probability P and 1 minus P in the lottery, we write it as a linear combination L equals P A plus 1 minus P B display style L equals pa plus 1 P B more generally for a lottery with many possible options L equals I P I A I display style L equals sum underscore I P underscore I A underscore I where I P I equals 1 display style sum underscore I P underscore I equals 1 by making some reasonable assumptions about the way choices behave, von Neumann and Morgenstern showed that if an agent can choose between the lotteries, then this agent has a utility function such that the desirability of an arbitrary lottery can be calculated as a linear combination of the utilities of its parts, with the weights being their probabilities of occurring. This is called the expected utility theorem. The required assumptions are four axioms about the properties of the agent's preference relation over simple lotteries, which are lotteries with just two options. Writing B a display style B prosec a to mean a is weakly preferred to B, a is preferred at least as much as B. The axioms are completeness for any two simple lotteries L display style L and M display style m either l m display style l per sec m or m l display style m per sec l or both in which case they are viewed as equally desirable transitivity for any three lotteries l m n display style l m n if L M display style L per sec M and M N display style M per sec N, then L N display style L per sec N convexity continuity Archimedean property. If L M N display style L per sec M per sec N then there is a p display style p between 0 and 1 such that the lottery p l plus 1 minus p n display style place plus 1 p n is equally desirable as m display style m independence for any three lotteries l M N display style L M N and any probability P L M display style L per sec M if and only if P L plus one minus P N P M plus one minus P N display style place plus one P N prosec P M plus one P N. Intuitively, if the lottery formed by the probabilistic combination of L display style L and N display style N is no more preferable than the lottery formed by the same probabilistic combination of M display style M and n display style n then and only then l m display style l per sec m axioms 3 and 4 enable us to decide about the relative utilities of two assets or lotteries in more formal language a von neumann morgenstern utility function is a function from choices to the real numbers u x 
R display style u colon x to math bb r which assigns a real number to every outcome in a way that captures the agent's preferences over simple lotteries under the four assumptions mentioned above the agent will prefer a lottery l 2 display style l underscore 2 to a lottery l 1 display style l underscore 1 if and only if, for the utility function characterizing that agent, the expected utility of L 2 is greater than the expected utility of L 1 L 1 L 2 IFF U L 1 U L two Display style L underscore one prosec L underscore two text IFF U L underscore one L E Q U L underscore two Of all the axioms, independence is the most often discarded. A variety of generalized expected utility theories have arisen, most of which drop or relax the independence axiom. Topic as probability of success Castanali and Lacauzi and Bordley and Lacauzi provided another interpretation for von Neumann and Morgenstern's theory. Specifically for any utility function, there exists a hypothetical reference lottery with the expected utility of an arbitrary lottery being its probability of performing no worse than the reference lottery. Suppose success is defined as getting an outcome no worse than the outcome of the reference lottery. Then this mathematical equivalence means that maximizing expected utility is equivalent to maximizing the probability of success. In many contexts, this makes the concept of utility easier to justify and to apply. For example, a firm's utility might be the probability of meeting uncertain future customer expectations. Indirect An indirect utility function gives the optimal attainable value of a given utility function, which depends on the prices of the goods and the income or wealth level that the individual possesses. Money One use of the indirect utility concept is the notion of the utility of money. The indirect utility function for money is a nonlinear function that is bounded and asymmetric about the origin. The utility function is concave in the positive region, reflecting the phenomenon of diminishing marginal utility. The boundedness reflects the fact that beyond a certain point money ceases being useful at all, as the size of any economy at any point in time is itself bounded. The asymmetry about the origin reflects the fact that gaining and losing money can have radically different implications both for individuals and businesses. The non-linearity of the utility function for money has profound implications in decision-making processes, in situations where outcomes of choices influence utility through gains or losses of money, which are the norm in most business settings. The optimal choice for a given decision depends on the possible outcomes of all other decisions in the same time period. Topic: <laughs> Discussion and criticism. Cambridge economist Joan Robinson famously criticized utility for being a circular concept. Utility is the quality in commodities that makes individuals want to buy them, and the fact that individuals want to buy commodities shows that they have utility. Robinson also pointed out that because the theory assumes that preferences are fixed, this means that utility is not a testable assumption. This is so because if we take changes in people's behavior in relation to a change in prices or a change in the underlying budget constraint we can never be sure to what extent the change in behavior was due to the change in price or budget constraint and how much was due to a change in preferences. This criticism is similar to that of the philosopher Hans Albert who argued that the ceteris paribus conditions on which the marginalist theory of demand rested rendered the theory itself an empty tautology and completely closed to experimental testing. In essence, demand and supply curve theoretical line of quantity of a product which would have been offered or requested for given price is purely ontological and could never been demonstrated empirically. 
Another criticism comes from the assertion that neither cardinal nor ordinal utility is empirically observable in the real world. In the case of cardinal utility it is impossible to measure the level of satisfaction quantitatively when someone consumes or purchases an apple. In case of ordinal utility, it is impossible to determine what choices were made when someone purchases, for example, an orange. Any act would involve preference over a vast set of choices such as apple, orange juice, other vegetable, vitamin C tablets, exercise, not purchasing, etc. Other questions of what arguments ought to enter into a utility function are difficult to answer, yet seem necessary to understanding utility. Whether people gain utility from coherence of wants, beliefs or a sense of duty is key to understanding their behavior in the utility organon. Likewise, choosing between alternatives is itself a process of determining what to consider as alternatives, a question of choice within uncertainty. An evolutionary psychology perspective is that utility may be better viewed as due to preferences that maximized evolutionary fitness in the ancestral environment but not necessarily in the current one. Topic see also Law of demand Marginal utility Utility maximization Problem decision making Software topic References topic Further reading Anand, Paul 1993. Foundations of Rational Choice Under Risk. Oxford, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-823303-5. Fishburn, Peter C. 1970. Utility Theory for Decision Making. Huntington, N. Y., Robert E. Krieger. ISBN 0-88275-736-9. Georgescu Rogan, Nicholas August 1936. The Pure Theory of Consumers' Behavior. Quarterly Journal of Economics. 54, 545 to 593. doi 10.2307/1891094. JSTOR 1891094. Gilboa, Itzhak Theory of Decision Under Uncertainty. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-0-521-74123-1. Kreps, David M. Notes on the Theory of Choice. Boulder, Colorado, West View Press. ISBN 0-8133-7553-3. Nash, John F. The Bargaining Problem. Econometrica. 18 2, 155 162. doi 10.2307 1907266. JSTOR 1907266. Newman, John Vaughan and Morgenstern, Oscar. 1944. Theory of Games and Economic Behavior. Princeton, NJ: Princeton University Press. Nicholson, Walter. 1978. Microeconomic Theory, Second Ed. Hinsdale, Dryden Press. pp. 53-87. ISBN 0-03-020831-9. Plaus, S. 1993. The Psychology of Judgment and Decision Making. New York: McGraw Hill. ISBN 0-07-050477-6. Topic. External links Definition of utility by Investopedia Anatomy of Cobb-Douglas type utility functions in 3D Anatomy of CES type utility functions in 3D Simpler definition with example from Investopedia Maximization of originality, redefinition of classic utility Utility model of marketing, form, place, time, possession and perhaps also task